this dev blog, I'll be talking about the development of Mordhau, what we've been working on recently, and what our plans will be for the future leading up to release. We'll start with some of our newest additions to the game, and features that are coming soon. First off, archery. We've been taking our time with this as we want it to feel rewarding for the archer, yet at the same time we don't want players on the receiving end to feel helpless and frustrated. One of the main points of archery is the sway mechanic. We needed a way to keep bows from being a point and click system, but at the same time, we didn't want to take control away from the player with a random spread, so we've implemented sway in aiming a bow. When you draw back the bow, you'll have a pronounced initial sway, but after a second, it'll settle into the sweet spot, allowing you to take accurate shots. Hold the bow back for too long and you'll start to shake, and after a little while longer, you'll be forced to cancel that shot. The recurve bow is a little bit more forgiving in terms of sway, and the longbow is best used for precisely hitting enemies from afar. Meanwhile, the crossbow doesn't have a timing requirement and it can be aimed indefinitely. However, you suffer from no sweet spot and a longer time between shooting. Hitting your target is the first step, but it also matters where you shoot. Armor is important. Landing headshots can be beneficial, but you can maximize your damage output by targeting weaker pieces of armor on players as well. All of this comes together to create a system where archers can shoot nearly as fast as they can aim, but it requires lots of skill and practice to effectively take down players on the battlefield. This is important to us, as we want to have as much depth in archery as we have in the melee combat. Another area of focus for the team has been Frontline, a 64 player tug of war mode that will be the main game mode of Mordal. In Frontline, two teams will battle over control of linear capture points. So you won't have to choose between playing the objective or cutting down your enemies. That being said, the maps and development allow for a lot of creativity in how you reach the objective. Use huge weaponry to destroy enemy defenses and soften up choke points. Flank around and open up the castle gates from within. Use traps to deadly effect. Charge down fleeing enemies from horseback and more. Vehicles have been added to the alpha testing, but they're still being improved, especially horse combat, which can be terrifyingly powerful. Cavalry can charge through multiple opponents, and lances can kill enemies with a single unblockable hit, but this comes at a cost. Get surrounded by your opponents, and you'll be quickly unhorsed and cut to bits. Cavalry also now has momentum-based damage. The faster you're riding, the more damage both you and your enemy will receive from attacks. This makes combat on horseback powerful, but dangerous. Vehicles aren't limited to horses, though. Unleash massive projectiles at anyone foolish enough to enter your sights with the ballista. Rain death from above with the catapult. And fight your way up treacherous ladders to take objectives. To actually see all these features in-game, we need to expand and create maps that are suitable for 64 player combat. This could be seen as our main priority at the moment, and we're hard at work on map production. We've taken steps to redesign and expand the map grad, giving it a village, farm, and extra fortifications leading up to the castle keep. On the map camp, we've turned the outlying area into a war-torn battlefield filled with trebuchet, crows, corpses, and more. As for new maps, we've already added two. Turney, a medieval tournament grounds plus a military barracks, and Mountain Peak, a frigid mountainous encampment with an emphasis on verticality and dangerous choke points. But that isn't the end of it. Work continues on other maps such as Taiga, a dense woodland map featuring a mining outpost, and Fatoria, a sprawling town and accompanying villages with narrow streets, a castle keep, and more. Adding new features and content is great, but we've been working hard to improve the foundation of the game, which is the melee combat. It's important that we get this to a fun, balanced, polished state for the release of the game, and we've done a lot to reach this goal during the closed alpha, which couldn't have been possible without the help of our testers. Mortal offers the player an unparalleled amount of control over the angle, timing, and location of attacks. However, this can come with some unintended side effects. We've made sure to strike a balance with this that encourages normal looking fights without taking control out of the hands of the players. 
In pre-alpha we got rid of reverse attacks, and recently we've added in a mechanic to remove 360 degree spins without affecting the ability to fight multiple people surrounding you. We've also made tweaks to how weapons act against different levels of armor. While Mordhau isn't a simulator, we do like to take inspiration from reality when it works well with the gameplay. We've made blunt weapons do higher amounts of damage to heavy armor, but they're typically slower and have less damage output when compared to cut-based weapons on lightly armored opponents. In addition to tweaking damage, blunt weapons no longer pass through enemies when you hit them, which looks a lot more believable, but also improves gameplay. These high damaging weapons are good against singling out heavily armored opponents, but lose some of their effectiveness when faced with multiple foes. While weapon balance is critical, we've also been hard at work on improving the weight and feel of the combat. We're in the process of adding locational wounds and a more responsive flinch system when being hit. Speaking of equipment, we've added a points-based loadout system. All weapons, armor, and equipment now cost points, so you can choose to wear heavy armor and sacrifice some of the most powerful weapons, run a halberd at the cost of armor, or anything in between. This creates a fun, balanced loadout system without limiting the player to preset classes, and allows more freedom to how you make your warrior. Our points-based loadout system is great, but we wanted to add incentives and reasons to play specific playstyles that aren't possible with a selection of armor and weapons alone, to create more depth through adding perks into the mix, which give you extra abilities at the cost of loadout points. For example, if you just want to mess around, we'll have a peasant perk, restricting you to nearly no armor and makeshift weapons such as farm implements and household tools. With large-scale battles, Mordhau needs to have top-notch mechanics in place for fighting in a chaotic battlefield. One of the changes we've made is to cause friendly attacks to stop when hitting teammates, which discourages friendlies from attacking through you to hit enemies. At the same time, we don't want to punish someone for the actions of their teammates, so we've removed flinch and reduced damage for friendly attacks. This should help to relieve some frustration from teammates not playing at their peak performance, especially when in large-scale 64-player battles. Animations are another front we've been improving. We've already done quite a few adjustments to make attacks feel snappier, as well as procedural lower body animations that make characters look much more rooted when in combat. In addition to this, attacks are now active for less time, and the arc for weapon swings is being improved. These changes not only look better, but also speed up the pace of combat. Netcode hasn't been safe either. We've had general improvements, as well as a ping compensation technique that helps to make high ping more playable. Mordhau has also gotten a facelift in terms of visual quality. We've updated to a new version of Unreal Engine recently, and with that came the ability to make the game look much more cinematic and impressive. In addition to that, we've updated to hit impact sounds when striking world objects, weapon on weapon impacts, added audio cues for gameplay elements, and more. Voice actors have been contracted, and you can expect to hear new voices in Mordhau soon. You'll be able to choose a voice preset and modify the pitch within reason. The voice you choose will give you unique taunts, as well as changing the voice of attack grunts and more, so you can fully immerse yourself in your medieval warrior. Not me! A little help here? This way! Hold your ground! You move with the grace of a drunken peasant! You ain't nothing but a dunderheed bastard son of a codpiece! You wanna try that again, sunshine? Fucking hell, check out this legend! Give me a hand, you muppet! Other quality of life features that have been improved are HUD elements. You can now see damage done, assists, and more, as well as a satisfying kill sound. If you prefer more of a minimalist approach, don't worry. These UI elements can be toggled to suit your tastes. Our UI artist has also upgraded the armory. When selecting weapons, you're now able to see detailed statistics to include damage against all armor types, weapon timings and speeds, stamina values, and more. Better yet, all of this comes directly from the code, so you'll never have to worry about the armory becoming outdated with subsequent patches to the game. Speaking of weapons, we've been hard at work to expand the roster and give you more tools to remove heads with. Our new weapons range from the fetish word, a training longsword for practicing your skills, elegant rapiers for dueling, a double-headed war axe, a one-handed short spear perfect for use with a shield, a one- or two-handed messer that's great at slashing through lightly armored foes, and the S-Dock, a fast two-handed stab-based sword. On the larger end, we've added in the Maul, a slow, short, 
high damaging weapon that's capable of one shot kills on heavy armor, and the Executioner's Sword, a massive sword that can cut down enemies with ease. But work doesn't stop there, more equipment's on the way, like this Viking inspired round shield. In addition to adding in brand new weapons, we've also added extra weapon skins for the ones we already have. They look great and nearly all of them are inspired by historically accurate weapons from the medieval era. There's too many to show in just one video, but a few pieces include the cleaver not only being a single edge viking era sword, but now also has a skin set to include the medieval falchion. And we've expanded the parts for the evening star as well, run a historically accurate peasant weapon, or run something that looks a little bit more fancy. Armor hasn't gone unnoticed either. Our artists have been hard at work adding new items so you can make the perfect medieval warrior. We've added better helmets for a crusader kit, gorgeous heavy armor, and an assortment of light armor pieces to make a dashing rogue. Weapons and armor aren't the only things you could bring into battle. A recent addition has been utility items such as smoke and fire bombs, yeah. and dedicated throwable weapons. Throwing knives are great against light armor, axes can deal good damage to more tanky opponents, and if you're on a budget, you can just chuck rocks at your enemies. We've just added in the bear trap to the game as well, which can rip the legs off of unsuspecting opponents, or knock you to the ground and leave a nasty scar. If you're more of a support player, don't worry. We've added in the wooden mallet and the blacksmith hammer, which can be used to repair fortifications or vehicles on the battlefield. Fortifications come in the form of castle gates, boarded up passageways and more, which can be destroyed and repaired during the course of a battle and can allow alternate routes into objectives. We've already done quite a lot to improve and add to the game, but work still continues. There are quite a few things we're still looking to complete before we're confident releasing Mordhau to the public. We want players, especially those who are new to the genre, to have tools at their disposal to learn the mechanics and improve their skill. To accomplish this, we're going to be working on a useful tutorial and detailed statistics so you can measure your performance. In addition to this, Frontline will have a soft matchmaking feature. This isn't designed to perfectly match up 64 players of equal skill, but more to give players a way to gradually face more challenging opponents as they master the combat of Mordhau. Still, more things need to be done for release such as UI and user experience tweaks, cosmetic progression, more music, more maps, more gore and visual effects, and the list goes on and on. Speaking of release, we don't have a date set as of now. We're working as hard as we can to get Mordhau out to the public, and you can expect it sometime in early 2019. We'd love to see people enjoying our project for years to come, but this means we need to do things the right way. We don't want to rush out a half-finished product or have a shaky launch. Thanks for watching. Make sure to follow us on social media for more information as we near closer to full release. It's time to crack some skulls! Yeah. Yeah. Yeah!
Oh! 